Greetings, friends. My name is John Gabriel, and this is the New Calculus Channel. So today, I would like to talk about a topic that is very dear to my heart, and it's about functions and what functions are all about. So mainstream academics have a lot of uh, silly notions about calculus and functions, and they've never really understood uh, mathematics. In fact, a lot of them would fail a, a comprehensive exam on Euclid's elements. So without further ado, let's have a little fun at the stupidity of mainstream academics. Now, suppose you're given that the function f of x is equal to x squared. Do you have to write x is an element of r? Do you really have to write that? Well, let's see. Now, mainstream mathematics professors and teachers are incorri incorrigibly stupid. It's a good thing that the brilliant ancient Greeks thought with unmatched clarity, for otherwise we wouldn't even know what we wouldn't even know about the parabola today. Never mind any of the other conics. Thankfully, they didn't use sets, for otherwise you might be writing x is an element of m. Hmm, where the M stands for magnitudes, or rather the set of all magnitudes. So why do the morons write X is an element of R? Well, let's continue. The first reason is intellectual vanity. The baboons feel smarter than they actually are. This writing X is an element of R is similar to writing this limb X, the limb of H approaches zero of this finite difference function. When in fact, according to my theorem, this is true, and Q of XH can be discarded because it is the difference in slopes between the non-parallel secant line and the tangent line. And you know what? You don't need anything past high school algebra to understand that this is true. And that's really all you need to know. Q of X of H is a function which uh, determines the difference in slopes and uh, I've written an article in this and you can find it and I will place a link in my way in the details section of this video. So in order to use lim as h approach approaches zero they need real numbers but there is no such thing as as a real number because uh, you know according to their set theory Irrational numbers are a subset of the real numbers. So what if you have that magnitude pi? Remember, pi is not a number. Pi is just a symbol for the magnitude known as pi. And how is pi realized? It's realized when you attempt to measure the periphery of a circle using its diameter as the unit. You can't realize pi in any other way. Okay? Now... The methods of calculus work only on functions that are smooth, which means that the function is also continuous. Uh, to be smooth over an interval, a function must have, it must be possible to construct exactly one tangent line at every point in that interval. If you have more than one tangent line, then it's not smooth, okay? And you can't apply the methods of calculus. You have to basically break it up at that point. Yeah. All right, so I'm not going to go into that because I've gone into that in my free ebook to which I'll also place a link. So there is no need to state X is an element of R when in fact magnitudes are mapped to magnitudes. Let's see an example, okay? So now, <clears throat> um, as you can see here, all I have to do is just move this along and this magnitude, which is the distance here along the x-axis is mapped to the y magnitude okay and there are many many magnitudes there which have no measure so you can say okay well two has a measure and it maps exactly to the magnitude four which is described by four okay similarly to three and one and so on but if you try to go to pi then all you have there are rational number approximations so it would be utterly absurd to write x is in 
the set of integers because then we would only see a few points on the parabola. How? Like this. See there? See those red points? That's all you would see if <laughs> if this particular x value could only be an integer. See? An integer. So there are no holes there because simply you can map any magnitude to its square. Okay? So let's bring this out of the way and continue. Now, in most cases, only rational number approximations are possible for given magnitudes. Yes? And there are no holes in the function because a magnitude can take on any value. So if we come back here again and we look at this here, these are the magnitudes that are being mapped, okay? The blue to the red, the blue to the red. And if I had to go over here, then I'm looking at roughly, this isn't pi, by the way. This is a very weak approximation, rational number approximation, which gives us this value here, okay? So what we don't do is the rot of set theory. We don't say x is an element of r because there is no r. For many reasons, there is no r. And of course, the delusional George Cantor was right about r not being countable. Can you figure out why? Let's see if you're smart enough to figure out why. Stop the video and think before I answer. Well, the set r, first of all, is not countable because it doesn't exist. And second of all, because in order for a set to be countable, one must be able to list its members systematically. So starting from zero, can you list all the members of R in the interval zero to one? Absolutely not. Now, if you assume that infinite decimal expansions are valid uh, representations of number, just so that you know, they are not valid. There's no such thing as an infinite decimal representation. That is the most moronic concept that that idiot Leonhard Euler came up with, okay? It's total crap. So that doesn't exist. But, and I don't want to lose track here, but, you know, when I think of mainstream academics, there are such fools that I really can't bear to even talk about this with them because for them, George Cantor and set theory is a religion, it's a belief, whereas there are no axioms in mathematics. Now, back to what I was saying about the set uh, being not being countable. But if you believe that there are infinite decimal expansions, then I can prove to you that R is indeed countable. And I have a video on this very topic itself, which is called Are the Real Numbers or, or Is a Set of Real Numbers Uncountable? Okay, anyway. So you don't need to write crap like this. Set theory is full of flaws, full of paradoxes, full of errors, and you cannot define number rigorously using set theory. You just cannot. And I've got many videos out there which show you why you cannot. And of course, my free ebook tells you the same thing too. Now, remember, the definition of a number is that a number, by the way, is a noun, okay? And what are nouns? Think about what are nouns. Nouns are names, right? So a number is a name given to a measure that describes a magnitude, which can be anything from length, area, mass, whatever. It doesn't really matter what the magnitude is. If it has a measure, then we give that measure a name, and we call it a number. Okay, so subscribe <clears throat> to my channel. Uh, by the way, I have some interesting news. My free ebook is now uh, currently undergoing translation in several languages, and there will be a French translation very soon. So I'm really excited about that. And once it's available, I will make an announcement to you so that those of you who are French speaking can read it in your own language. Okay, so um, thanks very much for listening. <laughs> uh, actually, you should be thanking me, not me, you. And we'll talk again about another interesting topic sometime in the future. So I'm going to label this uh, video Musings 2, okay? So 
And of course, I'll continue uh, more details in another video. I'm John Gabriel, and this is a new calculus channel. Till next time, goodbye.